Hi everybody, welcome back to the Claremont Classic Garage. Today we're going to be working on our utility trailer. We have three little jobs to do. We're going to install this tailgate assist uh, to make it a lot easier to lift the tailgate up and down. I saw a guy with one at the dump and he was, he was really happy with it. We're going to install this light on the front of it somewhere to illuminate the, the bed so we can see at night when we're loading stuff. And we're going to clean up the front of it and give it a coat of paint because it's looking a little rancid. Then we'll give it just kind of a general going over to make sure it's ready for towing season. Let's get started. So far so good. What's actually inside the box matches what they say is supposed to be inside the box. First thing we got to do is remove my four tie down anchors and drill some holes. So we've drilled our first four holes and in three of them we're going to be installing these these hold the spring tube in and I'm not sure if these bolts are long enough. No, every time I buy something that's universal it turns out to be universal fits everything except Kevin's thing. Anyway, let me go look for some bolts. I'll be right back. All right, now we're going to drill the holes to put the roller bracket on. Um, we're deviating from the instructions a little bit because the top rail on this is cut on a miter. And so that leaves me two choices. I could put a little piece of material in there and make it square again. Or we could just move this back and see if it works. So that's what we're going to, we're going to go with that first because it's more easy. I'm going to go ahead and put my tie down hooks back on. I'm not sure 100% they'll be totally effective, but I think underneath the tube I should be able to lift them up high enough to get a hook in there. Time will tell. Now, uh, the pulley bracket, I'm going to tighten this down because it doesn't really need to move. These brackets that hold the tube, I'm going to leave them loose until I've got them actually clamped around the tube. So that way I know they all end up perfectly straight. And I managed to incorporate this corner tie down into this hook. Okay, now we're going to mount the eye bolt here that's the anchor for the, the tension spring. But before I do that, i got to get the spare tire off and out of the way because it's blocking obviously where I have to go. And I've determined from looking at it now that I can put my, my tie down hook back there. Okay, so we're sliding the tubes now over the spring. And the next thing we're going to have to deal with is how they had this laid out. This thing here is supposed to bridge this gap and, and theoretically clamp these things together. Unfortunately, right here underneath this rail is a post and I was unable to, to do that. So um, I'm going to see what it's like once I get everything tightened up and determine if we have to come up with some kind of secondary means of securing this. In order to get this main tube to slide back far enough so that the joint is underneath this clamp, what I did was, number one, I raised, I raised this up a little bit by putting a 5 8 nut under it. And that, number one, makes, makes a little sense because now it gets this into the center of the pipe rather than sitting in the bottom of it. And I put this little notch in the bottom just in case I need to slide it back even further. So we're going to find out now if my plan works. Nothing like universal. Nothing I ever buy that says universal ever fits anything without having to wreck it. Anyway, perfect. Look at that. So there we go. There's our joint right where it needs to be. Yes, the end of it will be an inch further back than it would have been, but that really is inconsequential. Okay. So I'm going to pull this thing back out and get this eye bolt tightened back in. Now we can go ahead and install the other pipe. And this should all work out. So they want that to slide over that. There. And so there you go. Perfect. Our, our joint is right here where they want it. So we'll put all the hardware in these and tighten these all down. Then we can tighten the mounts to the, to the trailer frame. We've got all this bolted down now and it's solid. 
when we're done the complete install, I'll come along with my cutoff wheel and nip these bits of bolt off so they're not going to rip somebody's arm open or anything. Um, now, the next thing we're going to tackle is getting it mounted to the tailgate. And what we're up against now... Oh, there's some nice bikes going by. I like that yellow one. That yellow one had a V8 in it. Anyway, because our tailgate is about a foot narrower than the trailer, this isn't going to work. It can't pull sideways like that. That's not going to happen. So what we got to do is we're going to make a little standoff here on the tailgate so that this thing can operate in a straight line like it's supposed to. So over here, I've got the first few pieces made. Well, the only few pieces made. And this is going to go on here just like this. And that will allow us to put our eyeball here and let this thing work in a straight line like it wants to. So here's our standoff completed. Got a half inch hole drilled in it to mount our eyeball. So this has to go here. The instructions said 29 inches down from the top of the gate. So we're going to weld that on there. And then we can install our eyeball and hook up the cable and see what happens. So here's our standoff for our eyeball. We got our eye bolt in. Now we can use the, uh, the nut and washer. And well, well, that's a locking nut, so I gotta go get a ratchet. And then we'll tighten that up, and then we should be able to start setting up our cable. We've installed the lower roller and attached the end of the chain to our eye bolt. Now, in the kit, they supply this crappy carabiner. I'm not too fond of that. At the other end of the spring, they have a missing link to hold it, so I'm putting a missing link at this end. Just for my peace of mind. I, I trust that more than I trust this. Maybe I'm wrong. I'm no engineer. Anyway, so what we're going to do now that we've got this in here, we're going to try it. I think it's pretty slack. We could probably shorten up the chain a couple of links. Basically, what you want to do is get this thing tight enough that it'll let the tailgate go all the way down, but not pull it off the ground. So we're going to see what we have here. I want to stick this little bolt in here. This will keep the cable in there. All right. Here we go. You can see already it's pulling the spring. There's our gate on the ground. It does, does have a little bit of weight to it, so we're going to try and shorten, shorten the chain up a bit. Okay. We've got it now onto the third link, and it seems to work perfectly there. I had it on the fourth. And it, it, it felt like the tailgate really wasn't on the ground that solid. So we're happy with it here. So now I can go ahead and install the upper roller, which will capture, which will capture the cable. Okay, so here goes nothing. You pull it out the first little bit and it comes out. There's where it picks up the spring. Now you pull it down, it works kind of like the over center spring on your clutch. It goes down to here. Actually, it's probably more like a garage door spring. There. It hits the ground nicely, so you can load your stuff or unload your stuff. And then when it's time to put it back up, watch this. I'm right-handed, so I'm gonna use the pinky on my left hand. And up she goes. Beautiful. Now we latch it. We're ready to hit the road. So one of the last things we have to do on this install, you can see here the way the, these, these clamps pulled. These lock washers aren't really doing much locking. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to run down another nut to act as a jam nut on each one. And then I'll get the zip wheel and cut off the excess. Okay, so that's it for our tailgate install. Now we're going to move on to installing our uh, cargo light or utility light. And one thing I will pass along to you, another little tidbit, before we change jobs. I've got everything cleaned up here. Now, this is the box that the tailgate assist comes in. Boxes like this, I always keep. I'll trim the ends, trim the ends off it, and I keep them behind my press over there. And when I'm going to the wreckers, I just grab one of these and throw it in my wagon. Because invariably, i got to lay on my back underneath the car in a junkyard, and there's nothing to lay on. So I always have a piece of cardboard with me. 
Like my mom always said, not this nose, this one. I want to mount the light up on this front corner here, but far enough to the front so it's out of the, out of the range. If I swing the crane around, I don't want it to get cleaned off. So it's going to go right up to the corner here, and I'll show you how we're going to do it. Lights position, I'm going to zing it in with a self-drilling screw. There's one, and then we'll put another one in back here that will also pick up our tie down, because we don't want to lose our tie down. All right, so our light's on, it swivels around nice, but I would like to get it to be able to aim down a little bit more. And it won't, unfortunately, because this here hits inside the bracket there. But, little remark, we're going to fix that. More irreversible modifications. All right, so I found a little notch in the bottom of it. Now it aims down sufficiently that we can light up the floor of the trailer and an object on the ground that we might be picking up with the crank. So we can go ahead now and hook up the wires. Okay, so next thing we're going to do now is we got to get the wiring um, either to the trailer uh, junction box in the front of the trailer or the one in the back. But right now we got to get it down this post. So what we're going to do is just tack these quarter inch washers on here and run the wire down through that. All right, now it's time to hook up the wires to the light. I've got the, the feed that goes down. We, we just welded some washers on here to, to hold the wire. And then it goes underneath and it goes down into the tongue and back up here to our to our junction box. So all I gotta do is put a hole and a little grommet and then we'll run it into here. I have to fuse it and hook up the ground and hook up this end and our light should work. Our connections are made in here. Uh, the ground goes to there. The white, white is the color code for ground on trailers. And black is the color code for 12 volt positive, which is where we've hooked the hot side of the light through a fuse. My connections are made up here. I used heat shrink butt connectors. So I'm just gonna tape them up. And then we're going to make some checks. We're gonna check our wheel bearings and shoot a little grease in them that's fine. You just don't want to feel a whole bunch of play. They turn nice. This has got bearing buddies on it. So we just pull this plastic cover off and pump a little bit of grease in. Now we'll go ahead and check the tire pressure. They're load range C, so they should be at 50 PSI for max load. This one's at 38. Now, that's max load, right? If you're just hauling this thing around empty and you trust yourself to blow the tires back up when you put a load in it, you can let them down to 24 if you want. The trailer will ride a lot nicer, but I know better than to trust myself that much. We'll put the torque wrench on these once it's back down on the ground. Now we're going to test the breakaway system. This is very important if you're, if you're, this attaches to the truck and if your trailer becomes detached, that's bad, but it'll pull this cable, which pulls the key out of the breakaway switch and slams the trailer brakes on. Now why you have to check these all the time is because the switches aren't really made for our climate. And even though you can pull the key out, it doesn't do anything. The brakes don't come on. So the first thing we're going to check it's a battery condition. You just push the test button, fully charged. That's good. Now we're going to go ahead, see our wheels turn. We'll go ahead and pull the brake away and see if the, see if the brake's dynamite. See, it's pulled out. Let's see if the brakes come on. Bang. Let me check the other side.
Yep, our breakaway is working. Now, we'll put this back in. Oh, heard the brakes go off. Yeah, good. Oh, mosquitoes are out already. Okay, we've got our power pack here and I've got the trailer tester. So I can see I've got 12 volts. The circuit is complete. So now we're gonna go test our utility light that we just put on. Let's see. There she is. Works perfect. Okay, that's really the only thing on that circuit. And this will say charging, see? That's good. Now, we can go ahead and put on the parking lights. Got one out. I just bought that. Oh, there, fixed itself. Lights are funny like that. Sometimes they just take a little knock to work. Good on that side. License light. Yeah, good. Okay, now we're gonna try the, the left turn light. And the right. Okay, now we're gonna test the brakes. First, this one. All right. Now we'll go test the other one. Good. I'm liking my trailer tester, I gotta tell you that. So tomorrow we'll get started um, on the body and paint, whatever. We're just gonna scratch it up and, and put a new coat of black trim clad on it. But right now, it's time for 500 laps on a Saturday night at Martinsville, Virginia. Nothing in the world beats that. We'll see you in the morning. I've taken off a small uh, assortment of bits and pieces. I pulled out this front bulkhead. Um, and I'm just going to kind of dress some of the rust. And then we'll put some primer on it. Then we'll give the whole trailer a quick coat of black paint and get it spruced up again. That looks pretty snazzy, eh? We'll come out uh, once this dries and put a second coat on it. All the painting is done. It's looking pretty good, so we'll let this dry. And then we'll uh, take all the tape off, put the wheels back on. I've got some rust proofing spray for the bottom of it and I've got a couple of uh, doodads I want to install and then we should have a really nice trailer to use paints all dried now I'm gonna go ahead and blast the bottom of it with rust proofing so we've got our rust proofing gun out and um, we're gonna be using this stuff rust check coat and protect it's a pretty thick waxy clingy stuff that kind of stays on what you spray it on. Uh, it's designed for precisely this, under bodies and chassis and such. So, uh, we've got our air turned down to about 80 PSI. I'm going to go underneath and blast it with just my, kind of my general application nozzle. It's just a power washer nozzle brazed to a piece of um, quarter inch pipe. Works pretty well for stuff like this. Should only take me a few minutes. I'll be back when I'm done. She's all blasted with oil underneath. Now we're going to start putting the top side together. Um, not really too much. I got to put the tailgate assist back on, put the front bulkhead back in, put the wheels on. Shouldn't take too long. Uh, one of the last things I'm going to do here, I found this uh, in a box of junk, this little roller fair lead. So I'm going to put that on there and use it for my winch. So I've gone ahead and drilled a few holes. I just got to get a couple of bolts and bolt her down. That'll make it a little easier when we're winching stuff in and out of the trailer. That turned out pretty well, I think. At least now, uh, I don't have to tow an ugly trailer with my nice truck. Or my other nice truck. That, that always bothers me. Um, we've made a few improvements to it. Uh, including in the looks department. So that's it. She's ready to uh, go back into use. And uh, 
start hauling my junk again. Anyway, that's another job that I've been meaning to get done for quite some time, and now it's done. Fantastic. Anyway, uh, thanks for coming along, and I hope you'll tune in next time. And until then, this is Kevin checking out from the Claremont Classic Garage. Thanks, and so long.